No, no, it's, I don't think it's necessary. So I posted the, the link to the uh, summit notes. Please, please help out taking the notes. So the idea for this session is that we want to, we obviously want to get more people involved in, in good development, and we're working on better documentation and the new packaging guide. It's it's on track and uh, things are looking good. But what I felt like when I got involved was really, really helpful was that we had a set of tasks we were supposed to, to work on. Back then it was the, I think it was the transition to Python 2.4 or something. And we had a huge list of, of packages in the in, um, universe that we wanted to, to yeah, get transitioned. And the team spirit, where we had a list of 200, 300 packages and we went through them one by one and it was like, okay, I'm going to grab this one, I'm going to grab that one. It was super, super helpful and we as a team felt like we achieved something, we were part of something as a, as a group. And it was, it was just fantastic for So if you ran into a problem, you could always ask somebody in IC, can you please explain me how I'm going to handle this issue? And, and um, I think it would be great if we tried to would set up some initiatives like that um, again. Last cycle, George uh, did something similar for the for the Unity project. So they um, identified loads of bite-sized bugs, and he um, regularly reported on Planet Ubuntu and on mailing lists. Said, "Okay, this is the list of bite-sized bugs that we are trying to attack this and the next week." A bit similar to the paper cuts project, where it was also small design issues, small fixes that would make the user experience much much better. And what I what I also liked about about uh, George's approach was that he um, <coughs> reported back and, and also introduced um, new contributors who just got their first fix into the project. And and I think it's really nice. To to, um, to thank new contributors for their for their work and, and you know introduce them to the, to the project. So that's the the, the, the rough idea. That's, that's what I want to talk about today. Part of this as well is that um, uh, one thing that we've been seeing in the community team is that um, traditionally we become a funnel in which community is expected to grow, so people will use us as a conduit to say, okay, well, we, we want the community team to build a community in a way. And one of the challenges that we're facing in, across the platform team in Canonical is that it just, it's not the most effective way of working. We need to look at the different engineering teams to work with the community to encourage them to grow. So for example, you know, we saw this a lot in sponsorship here. People would, would participate, but then no one in, well, People would be so busy with their own stuff that the sponsorship queue wouldn't get as much attention. And what would happen is that the new user, new developer experience would suck. So one thing that we're actually trying to do, what this fits into, is, is a goal. I've been working with the engineering managers to try and build the responsibility into each of the engineering teams to grow the community out in different ways. The Unity project that George worked on was really the first example, the first way of testing this theory of um, focusing on a set of bite-sized bugs, which requires obviously our development community to triage those bugs. So there's a, a set of low hanging fruit. And it took a little while for George to manage to get the DX team to, to do that. But when they started seeing the contributions coming in, when they started seeing branches landing, the DX team knew that it was worth the investment of the time of actually going through and thinking, okay, this is, this is a small bug. But the other thing that really that was really critical about it was, um, was, the, was the weekly posts and specifically making them feel personal as well. Like, I asked George to make sure that he always included a picture of someone who was new. So they felt kind of a, a bit like what we tried to do with Hall of Fame, where someone feels like, you know, they get some kudos in the community if they're new, and it makes them feel like they're actually part of something. Um, and that did pretty well while it was going to Planet. When it really exploded, it was when it actually got posted on OMG, when it got on. And, um, when it, when it went there, you know, in the cycle, we, this is Unity, so Unity was already quite controversial in some respects, particularly by the, the copyright side of policy. And uh, we got 17 new developers in that cycle. 
So 17 new developers participate in the cycle. Right? And um, we want to take that approach and build it out across, across the other teams. So um, I think one thing that I'm really conscious that we do here is that we don't try to solve problems with tools. Because there are some bottlenecks that need to be solved and resolved in the development. Is there any for this? Partial solution for this problem? It's interesting because we, as Daniel's put together a report of what problems we have in developed communities right now, and we, the biggest feedback came, that came back was the bottlenecks, like things such as how you request a sync, stuff like that. And some of these problems can be solved with tools. So one thing that we're actually planning on doing this cycle as well is putting together what we're referring to as a bottlenecks task force, which is Daniel summarized. This might be something that could be useful, not necessarily for this session, but in the session is they're basically a list of that feedback of where people have identified bottlenecks and problems and how Ubuntu developers engage and work on Ubuntu. And we're putting together a team that's going to comprise of someone from Launchpad, someone from the Foundations team, someone from our team, to basically try and drive through those fixes. Yeah. But that's probably for another session. Yes, yes. Um, so going back to, to these kind of initiatives, do you have any ideas already, like what we can do, what could be part of those initiatives? Does it sound like a good idea? I think it sounds like a good idea. The, the thing I worry about is that we, I think we get a lot of these really great ideas and then they kind of fragment. So you've got, you know, a hall of fame over here and you have this developer resources over here and you have, you have so many different places that this information goes that it's difficult for someone who's not already in, I mean, I'm I'm pretty much in the Ubuntu community, and I still wouldn't know where to go necessarily to learn how do I you know, grab this, the source of this package and, and fix it and upload it, and then who do I talk to once I've done that? I would yeah. I would love to see all of these different things be pulled into like developer.ubuntu.com or at least linked from there. Yes, I agree. Including any of the like you know, new user recognition, at least a link from there, so that people can discover it. it would be great. So, so my idea around that was. I mean, we're, we're going a bit away from the initiatives part right now. Sorry, so, right, no, no, don't worry. Um, putting up the packaging guide is, is going to replace all the old wiki documentation in, in your time, and it should go to develop to, to come or some other place we're still figuring that part out. Um, also, um, I want to have more events uh, this cycle, again, like the packaging training sessions. Um, I'm doing a, a video cast every now and then. I want to do it more regularly. I um, want to blog more regularly and, and, and also have people sign up on, on Ubuntu Motu on the, on the packaging channel and and, uh, and these places. I don't think it should be it should get too fragmented. I think it's much better than it than it used to be. So something else as well, which we've talked about, is. Um, I'm really keen that we make the Ubuntu experience more personal and um, mentoring, making it feel like somebody has your back when you're, when you're participating with your thing. One thing that we trialed in the last cycle was um, we were talking one day and I said to Daniel, I don't feel like I have a good visibility on the timeline of someone's contributions. So like if I was to meet someone in the room for the first time and they say, yeah, I've been kind of like participating for the last few months. I don't feel like I, there's a way, a place which I can go to where I can have good visibility on what they've done. Because we often re review people's progress by significant and sustained. So what Daniel put together was basically a, a series of graphs that show the, the consistent timeline. I think it's like a year and a half, something like that. And then plots in the graph, like where they've actually had something uploaded um, as part of the sponsorship queue. So we can see instantly those people who would be participating a lot. And then Daniel could reach out and say, hey, I want to say you've done some really good work. Like, how can we help out? Just help them over the hump. You can do that on a more operational level. So, you know, we know that mentions are expensive in terms of time. People don't have time for it. But I'm wondering whether we can have better visibility on those people who are really working hard. Because I hate to hear these stories of people say, I've been, going, I've been going at this for like a year, and I'm still over like we're ready to kind of get through it, you know. So I'm wondering whether that was a, that was like a custom graph that was useful for us to talk about. And we had a conversation yesterday about whether there's privacy issues around providing that data public. But, but, well, yeah, we're just a fair line of that in the car, I know. Yeah, yeah. 
but let's talk about that separately. I'd really like, like us to get back to initiatives. Like, I don't want the problems to be solved in initiatives. Uh, that's the issue. But this session is about initiatives. Like, I, I, I want to bring it back to you. I thought this was about, well, yeah. I guess. Okay. Tell me about uh, uh, One thing I found helpful is, one thing I found difficult is when you come in for the first time, you don't know what to fix or where to start. Yes. Sometimes it helps if you have people saying on a bug report. I can help. Fix, I can help if someone is willing to fix this bug. Yes. If you want to fix this bug, get in touch with me. Yes. If we can have some kind of program or tied up with Harvest, that would be pretty cool. Yes. It's funny you mentioned that because I just wrote a small script. Once, <laughs> once, <laughs> once, once you let, I, I'm <laughs> once yeah. you let me commit it, <laughs> maybe two or three months, maybe. Good enough. Uh, on Launchpad, there used to be the, this um, mentoring. Yeah, the mentoring uh, functionality, I guess. I think for now it, it would be good enough if we had a script we just had bite size and then the bug right. right. it takes it just a bite size because very often I just don't think of it. That's the problem. Like I come across a, a small bug and oh, this one should be easy, but I don't think of tagging it. And it's a shame because. Um, it's really useful information for, for newcomers. They just follow a link and, and especially if, if you add a comment to the bug saying, I would be willing to help you with that. Wouldn't this be better as a browser button or something like that? So they then the lens in your face all the time and you have to switch to a terminal and then you do it? Yes, yes. But yeah. Yeah. No, that would make a big difference. People come into Ubuntu Mojo saying, what can I do? Yeah. And I like, well, there's nothing on my radar. I'm like, no, it's really easy. All the current build phases, like how much you know about GCC. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's why it would be nice to have a, a, a single line search that will be that we could, someone comes in and says, what can I do? And you yeah. say, well, look at this list here of bugs you could fix here, and tests you could run your pick something yeah. up this list. Is, it, is there any, any other tasks that come up during the cycle that should be easy enough to do? Or is it like, we always grab the easy stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get it out of the way. I don't know what is actually easy. Rebuilds. Um, I mean, merging and syncing tends to get quite hard. You need to really understand what's going on in the package. Yes. Some um, are harder than others. Yeah. But I mean, you look, you look at this and you submit a merge, and the person who reviews it says, Why are you carrying this change over? Because the vendor's obvious to you. And different things are easy for different people. Yeah. Like fixing bugs in PyGDK is like really easy for me, but packaging bugs I can't even <laughs> look at. You know, so maybe we can categorize bite-sized bugs and the like. Yeah, what well, in the Unity example of the bite-sized bugs campaign, there has to be some discussions around what bite-size really means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that was I think probably easy because that's a that was that project was not about packaging, it was about software development, so a lot of it was relatively straightforward to explain what simple is in terms of the development of unity, but packaging is different. So I think that the thing is is that you need to take that information about what needs you know, what you can do and not just keep it on one page though. You need to like I say the, the time when it really blew up with with the, with the unity examples when it went to OMG or two. Because it just so many more eyeballs went onto onto those bite size bugs and inspired people. Yeah, yeah, I did mean to like Put it only at one place. I never well, like put it there. And put it there, and then you walk out all the rest. Yes. Go here to find this. And if, like Daniel, if you're doing webcasts and so forth, I, I didn't know you were doing that. So, is there a place where I can find recordings of those? Oh yeah, they're they're, they're recorded, and there's um, Ubuntu Dev on Twitter, on Facebook, on Identica. That's where I post updates. So, so maybe we can talk to the OMG Ubuntu guys again. That come out there too. Oh yeah, yeah. I think you should. I, I mean, you know, I'm just kind of excited to hear about that, and, and just because I don't follow your blog. Eh? It's just is it, is it, is it something personal? <laughs> it, it, well, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> it's okay. You know, we're still friends. <laughs> Instead of just going down and fixing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm thinking of something like, sometimes there's typos in the package description, and I really can't be bothered to, to fix them, unless I'm touching the package anyway, right? But yeah. maybe it's not a good idea to also fix things like that. I mean, do we want to have a, uh, make a package different from Debian and just to fix the typo? No, 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 I'm not saying that. It, I mean, the end goal is not necessarily to get an upload into Ubuntu. Yeah. But if I'm mentoring some, somebody, I would tell them, okay, this is why I would take the decision to send it to Debian. This is the best way how you do it, and this is how you do test build just to make sure that it still builds and blah, 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 blah. And it, I'm just wondering like, if we announce this and we have, like, I don't know, like, check yesterday, there's like 110 byte size bugs right now. I think a few of them aren't really simple bugs. But, um, I'm just wondering if we announce this and I heard from so many people that they're really interested in getting involved and that they just want these simple tasks. Uh, I think the other thing is that the workflow needs to be connected. So like if somebody's going to be, if somebody sees a bite-sized bug, it's likely that they're not going to be particularly familiar with the sponsorship queue as well as the chief Yeah. And we need to, like one thing that was consistent in each of those weekly reports for the Unity bite size Bugs campaign was that it has a set of steps at the bottom of each of each blog entry that says, interested in getting involved? Okay, well first of all, do this, then do this, then do this. Yes. And, and that was appended to every end of <coughs> That does thing as a message saying, I'm happy to help you with this. Contact me, yeah. yeah. So Maybe you should also subscribe me to the bike. Oh yeah, 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 good idea. Can, can I ask you, Daniel, are all those 110 bucks, are those all packaging bugs? Um, I'm not quite sure. There might be some bugs where you where, where it was already identified that the fix is somewhere else and that you need to apply a patch and then get it into Ubuntu. What about the Unity byte size bugs? There weren't any packaging bugs, right, Jenna? They were all programming, yeah, it was no packaging. So that seems like there are really different categories of tasks. Do you think that could have contributed to the uptake of the Unity byte size bugs? I don't know, because I, I think that to me it's the, it's, 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 uh, well, I think this could apply to everything because it's like an on-ramp to participating in a particular kind of way. So um, if somebody's new to, to packaging, there's going to be a certain class of problems that are probably going to be easier to get started with. But I don't think there's always going to be situations where, you know, some are definitely going to be harder than others. Um, I think the key point is giving someone a place to start and then, balance, and then wrapping that up with a decent support. Yes. Yes. Starting with patching is the best way for everybody. Yeah, to maybe if, if, if a bug's got a patch attached to it, or maybe we should just rename it from bite size to something like death mentoring. Because I think that's that's the most valuable point that somebody says, okay, I think you can by fixing this bug, I think you can learn something, and I'm happy to help you through it. It's yeah. not like a major commitment, like you're going to help them, you know, mentor yeah. them until they're ready to become core dev, which takes like two years or something. But just one bug. I'm just wondering whether it would be useful to create like an intentional spread. So if someone came up and said, well, I'm interested in packaging, this is where I start. I'm interested in coding, this is where I start. Mm -hmm. yes. in the build system, Definitely. this is where I start. And I'm just, do you think it's possible that somebody might walk up to the queue and just see a bunch of packaging bugs? And if they're not interested in packaging, they may determine that there's nothing. No contributions for them to make. Well, sorry, what was the question? Do you think it's possible that we have a situation now where people want to contribute, but they only see packaging opportunities? They're not interested in packaging, so they determine. I think, I think what Rick's saying is that basically within Ubuntu developers, mm -hmm. there's actually many different classes of problems that can be fixed. So you, there's some oh, yeah. that are actual programming and some that packaging and. I think it would be worthwhile actually differentiating between those two. In the same way that we can have unity byte size bugs in terms of translations um, is another error. Or whatever, there's lots yeah. of or documentation. Well, whatever, right? There's Chinese restaurants, there's Italian restaurants, exactly. there's, you know, like, I think there's, and as, as, we, as we build these byte size, as we make this approach more operational across the community, we're going to want to make sure that we centralize all of this to different place at some point. So. Someone who's brand new to us from the very beginning and say, okay, I'm interested in this, and then they the wrong metric. I mean, there's, there's enough overlap between packaging and development. Sometimes you just have to check a patch and 
yeah. tight. And, you know, well, so. what I do is like you know, I fix bugs in people's apps, and I just like submit a branch back to yeah. the yeah. project and launch pad, and then they do what they want. So, so maybe, uh, maybe the maybe we could have like bite size dash packaging and bite size that dash. You can do that with simple tags, can you? You can just search for bite size and add this packaging. Bite size, that yeah. Not packaging, but bite size. Does that work? So the way it's done with unit, but well, the way it was done with the unit thing was just bite size. So it was just one tag. So again, I mean, it's essentially agreeing on the set tag. Search for this tag and not that tag. So we already have a tool for what, what we're talking yeah. about. I mean, we have Harvest, which is pretty awesome now. Since the last cycle, it's just that we're not using it well enough. Or we're not utilizing it well enough. Yeah. One, one bite size tag that's just bite size has the value of a lot of people aren't going to care about the difference between what kind. It's just they want some simple task that they can do in half an hour. So it's nice to have the aggregated list that's easy to find. Yeah. I think people are going to probably want, I think probably from the perspective of the new contributor, they're going to know the kind of thing that they're interested in contributing to. So they're like, I'm interested in packaging, or I'm interested in, or I have knowledge of C, and I'm interested in writing. People also don't know what's available, but I think they're sort of kind of wanting to go on the but they don't want, know what there is they could do. Yeah. But that's what I mean, like, where I think the, um, as, as we kind of bring up each of these different bite sized campaigns across the different groups, we definitely want to have that central paper where people can make that decision there. Right. Know. And then we can present that mental model at the top level. Because right now, when you go to developer.ubuntu.com, it's about writing programs. Exactly. And when you go to, the wiki about development is about um, packaging, and but I think there's the potential that there's you know a lot like I'm wondering whether part of the success of the Unity bite size program was that there's like a lot of people who know how to write a little code, they're interested in features, and here's an opportunity to actually like write some code that like showed up in the you know so it yeah. attracted people who. Would maybe not have been interested in package fixing packages. Yeah. Do we, okay. some, do we have some upstream interest in this program? Like I'm thinking of quickly, you know, so some the kinds of upstreams that would have easy approachable programming bugs as well. Yeah. Because when you tag your bite size bugs, they're probably most likely going to be programming bugs and not packaging bugs. Right. So quickly doesn't have very complicated packaging. I mean, things like this bite size campaign is nothing particularly new. I mean, I know it's you know, do this. Yeah. Um, Greenlit has a baby yeah, yeah. program too. Like the the idea of bringing in new contributors through like bite size or small or easy or however you want to tag them bugs. Yes. Um, it doesn't it doesn't just impact developers who might not be interested, but it also has a lot of impact on developers who might not be so confident. Mm. And I think that's that's like one of the big ways you can get out of that kind of program. So maybe in terms of this cycle, I mean, I'm just thinking maybe. It will make sense to start out simple and maybe just pick one classification of problem, let's say for the sake of argument, packaging bugs, and see how that goes for the first month or so, and then just keep evolving the program and expanding it where we think it makes sense. Yeah, we're, we're preempting a lot of situations right now without necessarily doing it first. Like, I think Rick raises a really good point about the Unity thing is pretty tightly coupled in terms of. Is a programming C plus plus is programming. It, it, it will attract a very specific demographic of the user, and they're either interested in it or not, and device them on around. But when we started doing it with Unity, we then had to make sure that, for example, there's people in Hash Ayatana who could answer their questions, and then the DX team had to get used to that. So I think we're probably going to we have the sponsorship queue as the primary on ramp in terms of how this works here, which is now a much better shape. So do you think that it might be interesting for, interesting for us to just say bite-sized packaging books first of all? Okay. Yeah, and just check. We, we can search for, for multiple texts in, in Launchpad. We can uh, also get them up on Harvest. We can easily link to them. And we could make the script work so that it uses both texts if specified. So, has yeah. there, has there been any consideration of um, syndicating whatever particular easy bug tags uh, end up using with something for the community like uh, OpenHatch, um, which is specifically intended for new FOSS developers. It's sort of like an aggregator of easy bugs or 
Oh, yeah, we, we, we have something like that. Um, I don't know if you've seen Harvest. Well, in, in oh. terms of rather than re, like reinventing the wheel or having a separate system, a lot of it's, software it's already It's already there. In OpenHash. No, I don't know what OpenHash is. So OpenHash, as I explained, OpenHash is a uh, site that specifically aggregates easy or beginner bugs across a number of different open source projects. Um, okay. So it's sort of like a go-to resource for, for people who are interested in getting started. Mm -hmm. it's it's not good. It, it sounds like what you're getting at is, is that you can find a broader audience. Though, yeah, right? exactly. Like, it's it's just another, you know, not about to, but just are interested in open source development. Whether we're going to build our own thing or not, it's probably worthwhile to also be aggregating those bugs in open hatch. Okay. And it's really like, you know, put in an RSS feed of a tag of easy bugs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take an action to investigate what open hash is, how it works. Mm -hmm. like it's okay. Okay. Uh, what would it take to get more information into the um, harvest so it doesn't just have a bug number mm -hmm. for each item? The harvest at the moment for most things just shows a bug number. Yes. What would it take to actually put a little no, short it's, summary? It's, it's already there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to uh, update the, um, the data feeds because now we have description and long description or something so <laughs> but yeah if you look at I think one thing I would mention sort of as well is that in the past we've tried to solve problems such as development growth and building tools and harvest is really great but um, is you know, the thing that the paper cuts campaign taught us was was rallying people around a set of shared goals and that's where the inspiration came for the unity thing was was um, not only presenting a list of bugs that, that are of interest to be fixed, but also summarizing the progress of those bugs as well. So George every week would say, hey, here's 10 Unity bugs that are really low hanging fruits, rock out with them, and then the following week he'd talk about the progress that was made in those 10 bugs, and it made it feel very dynamic, and it provided fantastic validation for those people who participated. So I mean, linking to to me whether whether the, whether the bug is on harvest or whether it's just on launch pad is for me. I'm personally very really different about it. Harvest is cool, obviously, yeah. because it's a good way of searching. Can I ask you a question? Were you busy? No, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I was not Okay. No. So um, I'm interested in getting your feedback on an idea that I was talking with Joan now, which is about having each of the teams can be boot to engineering, like kernel, desktop, foundations, etc have each of these teams have their own like specific plans for how to bring like newbies into the fold. Like so that, you know, probably like the desktop team would have different problems in the foundations teams and like different opportunities for people. And then have those teams be like the Unity team was where they have like, you know, the dedicated to the mission of like helping bring new people on board. Like from the Motu perspective, would that be like bringing people into the fold, or would it be like a whole new thing on the side? Would it be a distraction? Like, so you're saying each team should be kind of promoting our planet and new sites. Well, I think they should be doing things. work that like the DX team was, like be available to mentor mm -hmm. new people, like identify opportunities for new people, and bring people like into there. Like, so the desktop team would be trying to get new people contributing to the desktop team. Um, uh, but I'm asking you because it seems like, like what your perspective on that would be. Would that be like just a distraction from the existing Motu processes? The thing, I, the thing about Motu is that we are generally at the kind of first starting place for a lot of developers anyway. So this is to some extent is what we do. But uh, we don't necessarily kind of go out and you know, actively try and pull people in. We, we just we're there, we're on our seat, and people come in and ask us to help. And so, so when people join, yeah, you say they come in and say, "Oh, I want to give me a bug to fix," and then you say, "Maybe you can harvest or do you're this." The, to you're that. The right? But we don't regularly kind of poll Planet or poll Roman G and say, "We're here and come, come and work with us." So, so I'm I'm happy, and it's going to be my one of my tasks next cycle um, to actively reach out and actively say, "Okay." Mm -hmm. This is the list of bugs. This is the instructions you need. This is where, where you can find people. And I'm going to also um, actively reach out to 
new contributors uh, individually. But I'm just trying to figure out what we as a, as a developer team need to do to have everything in place, like have enough bugs they can, uh, they can start working on. Like what else do we need to bear in mind? Like, I think no initiatives, like are there other transitions or, or, or like what else can we offer them? Have I, have, I have one idea about this. So, sorry. Can I say my one idea? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so often as exploiters and developers, we get involved with kind of projects which take a, a, a period of time and then they're done, right? So the, the transitions are a great example of this. So for example, once per cycle I usually do a Haskell transition, which is entirely in universe and it requires I upload a new version of the compiler and then that breaks every library package and then I have to fix them all individually in the right order, right? And this would probably be a really good thing for someone to come along and help me with. So it would help me get my job done faster and it would help someone else because they could, then I can tell them, mentor them, tell them how to do this specific mm -hmm. task and they can get a few things uploaded and mm -hmm. get a bit of an introduction. So mm -hmm. my suggestion is when, when someone gets involved in a task that they would otherwise be doing themselves, they can put it on this. So it sounds like what you're basically saying is uh, the, the thing about the bite size thing is that they're very it's granular, they're individual things. Yeah. What you're saying is essentially more like a project. This is kind of a project that's going on and so it's got a developer involved with it that can mentor yeah. people specifically on this one task. All of the tasks are going to be kind of similar because they're on the same project, so some can experience. Work experience. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that probably my ignorance is helping But <laughs> you know, I mean, do we actively go where the developers are? I mean, you know, we know that we sample type of the universities, we know, go back to our own universities, come to some computer science department and say, hey, do you want to get your guys involved here in a formal basis? This is part of it's help. Yeah, this is going to be part of the goal. I mean, it's all building on what Rick said earlier on. One thing that we're planning on doing in the cycle is um, our teams become very much uh, a funnel in which a lot of other teams kind of go through. We we'll want to work with representatives from each of the other teams to go out there and encourage developers to participate as well. So, the desktop team would work with, with the community and respective organizations near them. Um, the server team will do the same. So the idea is that we'll actually, we, we have a consistent workflow. Uh, this is the reason why I think there's interest around the bite side focus approach is that, is that it's a fairly consistent way of working. So all of the teams benefit from the same best practice. But then the service area in which we can reach out is great so because more people are involved. But I think your idea, Lainey, of projects is a really good one. It's additive. Yeah. Else. That yeah. sounds like it would be more. It's not necessarily useful. something that I wouldn't find a bite sized bug about every single package that sure. I exactly. But exactly. they would all be there. There's some work that needs to be done. It's like a different unit of mentoring. Yeah. 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 The thing with one of the difficulties with bite sized bugs for experienced developers is not just fixing them themselves, like letting go of that, that little quick fix that you know could only be a couple of lines of code, but that little you know three line patch will build a ton of confidence for a new developer and potentially like get them well on their way to building bigger things. That would be more more interesting bugs. Yeah. And then also going back to gardening, if you get into the cycle of ways and you've got some bugs that you left as bite size because you figured someone would pick them up. If somebody doesn't pick them up, you <laughs> kind of need somebody to go back and go ahead and see what they're doing. With ten minutes left what can we actively take out of the session as, as, as work items to to make that process smoother? Like, if you have a project like that, I'm really happy to blog about it, talk about it in the video cast, and then reach out to people so you yeah. have enough. Uh, it seems to me like what you're trying to do in this cycle is, in terms of the, is, is what I recommend as, as, as a good outcome of this session would be uh, if, if we're all in agreement that we're going to. But the, the, the only way the bite size thing is going to work is if, is if we have enough bite size bugs and if people are also willing to help these new developers to get people to participate. So that thing will be a good agreement is socializing what the tags are going to be and helping people to understand what a bite size bug is. So as developers, everyone can make sure that those bugs are there. But then secondly, I'm going to follow up conversation with Laney about his idea. And, I think so too. I think the first thing the bite size bug team correct me if I'm wrong, lady, but that seems to me like that's about you guys working with the engineering teams, yeah. like that are, you know, like yeah. canonical staff helping think through that, but then like, it sounds like the MOTU potentially could use some of your support in helping like structure yeah. introductions around projects and be about like individual MOTUs on projects. I also so, imagine we would have a lot of bite-sized ones, because 
as well. If there's any interest, yeah. I'd be happy to put that in the treatment community. who has been doing the bite-sized bugs thing for like three years. Cool. Yeah. The what community? Greenwood, it's a fork of live journal. <laughs> so if you can imagine, like, was it 300,000 lines of gnarly curl, and 75% of the developers are women, and about 50% of them learned how to program in order to participate in this project. So it sounds like you have some We've good experience mentoring new those people. Community bugs in terms of getting newbies on board. So, can you help then? With yeah, absolutely. Because I think our, some of our teams could use some mentoring. And, yeah. Yeah. So, Lady, uh, with the projects, do you view that as a, as a you know a sort of a first tier? Somebody shows up and wants to get involved, and, and this is the sort of thing you would like to work. With the they can be whatever you want them to be, right? So you can. I'm set, sorry. They can be whatever you want them to be. So I'm Perhaps they can be kind of like a, a job advert or something, maybe? Like, yeah. you'll need these skills, come talk to me. Okay. So, and then I've got a slightly harder project, you'll need to have worked on the pub packages before. Right. Come and talk to me, and I've got something that may be a bit, little bit challenging. I mean, from my perspective, one of the things I like, sorry, about, about bite sized bugs is that they're very, they're bite sized, so somebody without a lot of investment yeah, can get yeah. involved and try it out. I, I think it's, slightly, it's a slightly different thing. Bite sized bugs are, I want to take one fix and do it, and no. that sounds like you're, in many ways, you're. Idea is in some ways the next level, like people who don't have a lot of time and still feeling their way forward, they can, they can get involved in the bite sized bug thing and they can only commit like an hour of their time as, and as it builds their interest in participating. But then when they're at that Once point, they where they're, hooked, they're, when they're hooked, <laughs> like we can then suck every ounce of energy out of them. That's one of the grinding rebuilds. You like that? Oh, that's been all right. right. <laughs> Some people might want to start out that way. So I'm kind of visualizing like a landing page that says like how to get started. Like if you want to work on pack, you know, here's the packaging bite-sized bugs, here's exactly. Python bite-sized bugs, here's C bite-sized bugs. And like there's the following, if you want to participate in it at a project level, here's the following projects and the mentors. One thing we're going to be like, redeveloping is Lucy.com forward slash community as well. We are talking to the design team about that so we could expose some of this there. So it sounds like we need some work items to work with Motu to extract like candidate projects that they'd be interested in having help. Like, mm -hmm. So um, you can do this pairing thing from both sides as well. Like we said about job descriptions, you can also have a place where you send newbies to say put your name, your experience, and your interests on this list, and then developers yeah. that have a little yeah. project, you know, they're going to take that guy. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a website? I think newbies that have motivation but have no clue would be more than willing to go there and fill out a little tiny little Yeah. That's actually a lot of what OpenHash does. So I highly recommend checking it out. Yeah, and we do get people on on Hash to develop. You know, one every other week or so, somebody says, "I'm interested in participating, and I know how to program. What should I do?" And it's very difficult to having a landing page like that. The point. Yeah. So um, just in terms of next steps, we've only got a few minutes left. Daniel, what are the sessions? That, can we continue this discussion in some of your other sessions that you scheduled this week, or should we schedule another session to this? Maybe we should have another session. But it's going to be hard to squeeze it in. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. If you're all subscribed to the blueprint, I'm going to add, add a note there. We believe in callback. There's an uncertainty that everyone really just said that. <laughs>
investment in this is like the number one priority for at least the next cycle. Yeah. So if you feel like you're not getting good service, let me know. <laughs> <laughs>